okay, stay. No, stay, I said stay, all right. Well, can you believe it? 92 years old. 92 years old, can you imagine? I finally got what I always wanted, regularity. <laughs> and, 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 and I gotta tell you something else. This, this knocks me out. Karen, my wife, says, what do you want for your birthday? I says, an antique. So she framed my birth certificate. <laughs> and on top of that, I got over 200 happy birthday cards, but I remember a long time, long, long time ago, I got a birthday card from the President of the United States. Honest, I never believed that Abraham Lincoln knew who I was. <laughs> it, it, it's just amazing. By the way, Karen and I just finished doing a show in, uh, in Milwaukee at the Potawatomi Casino, and uh, I enjoyed it very much. And I, I gotta tell you, I was in Barnes & Noble a couple weeks ago, and TV Guide came out with a magazine with a picture of the Beatles. And I bought it, because I, I love the Beatles. And I'm looking through, the, and I open up, I look at John Lennon's picture, and then I open it again, and there's a full photo of me with John Lennon. <laughs> Can you imagine that? I let out a scream. I, I, I couldn't believe it. And, that, and then I thought over, well, I'll tell you later what I said to him, why he's laughing and why he's looking at me through his glasses. That was, uh, then I start thinking over 50 years ago when I was working with my partner, Steve Rossi. God rest his soul. May he rest in peace. It w how we were brought together, I was in Pittsburgh, my hometown, and they had me booked with a girl singer. I said, who is it? They said, you'll never believe it. It was Sarah Vaughn. And at those times, the singers were the number one and the comedians were the ones that opened the show by doing 20, 25 minutes. And it was unbelievable, and she says, I have a friend and I think he could use you and he'd like you. And I said, okay, I'll work for him. Who do you think it was, ladies and gentlemen? You know, most of you know, Nat King Cole. So I went to work for Nat and he, there's no way to explain what this man was like. Then I worked with Frank Sinatra and then I worked with Dean Martin. Then I worked with Sammy Davis. It, it was hysterical, but when I'm thinking about working with, with Steve and I together, when Nat King Cole brought us together and we did all those shows and we went from the Copacabana and we did all the television shows and broke everybody up and we were skyrocketing. And then came the invitation from Ed Sullivan as you know, Alan and Rossi did more shows uh, for Ed Sullivan than, well, they said, how many shows did you do? I said, we did more than Ed Sullivan. <laughs> and then came the day, he says, I'm putting you on with the Beatles. Well, I almost collapsed. And to try to get into the theater, which is now uh, 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 still standing there, Thousands of little girls yelling, Ringo, John, Paul. And I start yelling, Marty. And the girls are going, who? It was unbelievable. But we scored heavily. And then I got to tell you why he's left, why, why John Lennon. He had no idea who I was. And at the time, I had the wild hair. I had the Zulu haircut. And, and, and I walked over, and I said, John, and he didn't know who I was. I said, John, he said, yes. I said, a lot of people mistake me for you. <laughs> and he got hysterical laughing because he couldn't believe that I would say anything like that. And, 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 and that was the 
culmination of everything that ever happened to be on a show with four of those, those four wonderful kids. I knew right off the bat they were going to last a lifetime. And then, then I started to think of all, all the people I worked with, Sammy Davis. And Sammy Davis used to do something to me. He'd say to me, before I go on, I want you to tell me jokes so I can go out laughing. And that was it. Every time I worked with Sammy, he say, tell me a joke, and then I'd walk out. Now, that was what was hysterical. I got to tell you the joke. The girl is sitting at the bar, and the guy's sitting beside her. And she says, I don't understand. The men keep coming at me. They won't leave me alone. It must be my lovely hair. Guy says, no. She says, well, then it must be my sensuous face. No. Well, then it must be my seductive body. No. I give up. He says, that's it. Oh. <laughs> and the one that, the, this one I told him, I think it's now been published everywhere, but it was my joke at the beginning. I said to him, Sammy, you got to hear this. This Jewish boy is getting married. He went to his mother. He says, Ma, I'm getting married. Mother says, Oi, wonderful. He says, I'm bringing her home with two other girls. We'll have dinner. And I want you to tell me which one I'm going to marry. <laughs> OK. So that night, he comes home with the three girls. And then he runs in the kitchen. He says, Hey, Ma, which one am I going to marry? She says, the redhead. He says, how did you know? She says, I hate her. <laughs> and, and, and Sammy Davis, in my estimation, like I say, uh, the people that I work with, Sammy and, and Dean and, and Frank Sinatra, these are superstars we'll never see come away again. And I think of it with such fond memories of the brilliant talents that they were. But Sammy was, was hysterical. And he'd walk out dancing, and he knew that I won all kind of jitterbug contests. And he says, OK, do your step. And I <laughs> do this. He said, yeah, that's enough. <laughs> and then, uh, then he'd walk out after I told him the joke and hysterical laughing and dancing. And he, he was magnificent. In my estimation, and I say this in all sincerity, Sammy Davis was, to me, one of the greatest artists of all time. There'll never be a guy like that. He could sing, he could dance, he played all the instruments, he could act, everything he did. And, and, and it was absolutely hysterical. But when I think of dancing, my friend Ernie Borgnine, very dear friend Ernie Borgnine, he, I made the match between him and Tova. And they were invited to the White House. And they said to Betty Ford, who was a friend of Tova, we'd like to bring a friend of ours, Marty Allen. She says, oh, the comedian, I know him. And I'd love to have him come. And we go to the White House, and it was uh, for a dinner for uh, one of those guys from out of town, and uh, <laughs> some important guy. But then we, when it was over, and she said to me, she says, Marty, I hear you're quite a dancer. I says, yeah, I won all kind of jitterbug contests. And I says, I happen to know, Mrs. Ford, that you're a fabulous dancer. And, and she says, well, let's find out how good we are. I says, you want to dance? Yeah. So I go over to the band. I says, what could I play? What could they possibly play to, that I could dance to? So I go over and I said, sir, do you have any kind of music? I want to dance with Mrs. Ford. He says, yeah. I feel the earth move under my head. That's the one they played. <laughs> And I start dancing with her and she, because she was a fabulous dancer. 
and she was unbelievable. We're dancing, and Pre <laughs> President Ford, he's yelling, great, great, great. It was hyster <laughs> absolutely hysterical. And I, I don't know when I've been more happier dancing with somebody than dancing with Betty Ford. And, and I want to tell you, and I say this in all sincerity, there are two women that have been in the White House that I respect and say, without a doubt, they have done more for us in, in, a, in the White House than anyone. It would be Betty Ford and Eleanor Roosevelt. That's the truth. That's as far as I say. And then I, let me see. Then I walked into, oh, I'm in a, re by the way, Steve Rossi and I, we had a great career. We split very amicably because we, we had gone around. How many times can you go to the Copa? How many times can you do this? How many times? And I was getting offers to be a regular on Hollywood Squares, and uh, they wanted me to do Big Valley with Barbara Stanwyck, and I did a movie in Malta. And uh, I said to Steve, let's split, Steve. Let's split. And we split, and we remained friends till the end of his wonderful life. And I'll never forget him. Great, great man and a marvelous singer and a wonderful man. I'll always respect him and always would think of him with a great deal of love. But then I walked into a restaurant. Now I'm, I'm back doing single uh, with different singers. And I walked in a restaurant in Los Angeles on the Sunset Strip called Cyrano's. And there was this beautiful girl who was standing there, and she's the maitre d', and I couldn't figure it out. She, and I found out it was Karen Kate Blackwell, and she was managing the restaurant for a friend of hers, and at night she does songs. She sings and plays the piano. And I asked her out on a date. Oh, when I came in, she said, oh, Mr. Allen, we're honored to have you. Is there anything you like? I said, yeah, I'd like a fruit salad. So she says, I'll go talk to the chef. And I wrote on the uh, menu, I, I like the fruit salad, but I like the way you walk in your dress. <laughs> I'd rather order that. Anyhow, I asked her for a date, and I went to her house, and I heard her sing, and I heard her play the piano. And she's a female, Jerry Lewis. And as a vocalist, she can glide from rhythm and blues the country, gospel, and ballads, and her range of singing is incomparable to most of the girls that sing today. And she knocked me out, and I asked her, I got an idea. I said, listen, would you like to become my partner? I'd like to, I'm going to Pittsburgh. So I took her to Pittsburgh, and in the middle of my act, I stopped, I said, I got a surprise, and I invited her up. I had her sing, and she knocked him she knocked them cold. They went absolutely ape. And, and, I, and then I got an idea. I said, gee, wouldn't it be wonderful if I made her my straight lady? And, and, and I said, I talked to her and I explained to her. She says, yeah, it sounds like a good idea. Well, we got together, ladies and gentlemen, and they caused the new George Burns and Gracie Allen only I'm Gracie. What a talent. What a talent. What's your name, sir? <laughs> I'm kidding. That's Clint Holmes. And uh, we performed all over the world. We did cruise ships, and we did Las Vegas, and we had a lot of success here. And recently, we worked for Louis Anderson when he'd take off. We filled in at the plaza, and I, Mayor Goodman was there. I got to tell you about Mayor Goodman. I, I, I never told anybody this. You know, he drinks martinis like they, they never stop. And he went to the doctor, and they asked him, you know, for a urine sample. They found an olive in it. I can't, 
I never tell that. Look at this, I lost 38 pounds. 38 pounds, I only eat on the days when President Obama makes the right decision. And I want to tell you something else. I can never retire as long as I can walk on a stage and entertain. And God willing, I will be listening for the laughs you gave me here tonight. Thank you very much. Not yet. What a talent.